to 95. The end is near, but not nearly soon enough. I'm getting ready to go board my animals because I'm tired of seeing them pant and scratch because they're too hot. We are tracking the long-awaited end to a brutal June heat wave. Plus, we'll break down two major decisions which could impact your health care and equal rights protections for some Americans. And the country gains another federal holiday, a celebration long overdue. When we as a nation have decided to stop and take stock and often to acknowledge our history. Well, we told you Monday to brace yourself for three days of record-breaking heat, and, well, it came true. Denver's all-time heat records fell Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday, three straight days above 100 degrees. Oh boy, we have been keeping track of temperatures for over 100 years now. This is only the sixth time Denver saw three straight days of 100 plus temperatures. And thankfully, it doesn't look like we'll break the record for consecutive days above 100. There were five day heat waves in 2012. 2005 and 1989. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Andrew Heal. And I'm Shannon Ogden. The contact Denver 7 inbox has just been flooded with emails and phone calls from people who can't get their apartment complex to either fix or turn on the air conditioning. Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez is joining us live from an apartment complex in Denver where the majority of the buildings have been without AC and we're talking weeks, Ivan. And we're right outside the Mint Urban Infinity Apartments. Right now it's about 93 degrees. And while most of us go home to cool off and relax, the residents here tell us they haven't had AC since, last, since late May. <sighs> For many, home is a refuge, especially during winter storms or extreme heat. This is my apartment. But at the Mint Urban Infinity Apartments in Denver, chiller system running right now. Residents have lost that homey feeling. These apartments are nice. They could be beautiful. You could have a good tenant. You could have a productive business, but you can't have it like this. Tina Franklin and her family moved into this apartment in February. Around the end of May, residents received an email saying the property was transitioning from the boiler to the chiller and the work would be done rather quickly. We expect to have all built buildings fully transitioned by the end of the week. But to this day, Still, no AC in all of the buildings. Instead of receiving a date when the work would be completed, residents were given tips on how to stay cool instead. Avoid using heat-making kitchen appliances so they don't even want you to cook supper. The heat forced Tina and her family to invest in an air conditioning unit, but even that barely brings the temperature down. I had to go sleep in my car with my air conditioner running. Tina wasn't the only one who reached out to Denver 7 with similar issues either. We have not had air conditioning since the summer began, so for at least the last two weeks. Another viewer emailing us saying even the pool was closed for maintenance, and they were in the process of canceling their lease. This is getting ridiculous. A note on the office's window says... Staff is working behind closed doors due to a recent increase in resident inquiries. But I can forward your information. When we asked for answers, they directed us to corporate and told us we were so, trespassing. Unfortunately, we have to ask you the property. Then walked back inside the only air-conditioned building on the property. Cardinal Group Companies, which owns the complex, replied with a statement saying, we are aware of the chiller issue at the company and are working as quickly as possible to remedy the situation. The unusually high heat at this time of the year across the area has contributed to delays to repair the equipment, but it will be back up as soon as possible. We apologize to our valued residents that are inconvenienced. Now, we did follow up with another question asking for a timeline as to when these repairs would be completed by, and we did not hear back. In Denver, Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. Oh, that is so frustrating. Ivan, thank you so much. By the way, XL Energy is looking to charge you more for energy and natural gas use over July, August, and September. The company submitted its rate increase proposals to the state this week. They want to charge customers 23% more for natural gas compared to third quarter 2020 and 8% more for electricity. The state will review the application. It is almost a sure thing to be approved. Well, I don't know whether it's good or bad, but Mike Nelson nailed this heat wave. Uh, and tonight, uh, forecasting a <laughs> cool down. Hi, Mike. Hey, Shannon. There is some good news after the third straight day of triple digits and the third straight day of record highs. Across the region, 100 degrees here and in Fort Collins, 101 at Greeley. 
106 out at Ray this afternoon. And right now we're still holding in the 90s and even 101 at the top of the hour at Greeley and out at Grand Junction. So the heat just rolls on. Fire weather warning, southwest Colorado, ozone alert, front range area. There are scattered cooling thunderstorms. I actually dropped the temperature about 20 degrees down at Colorado Springs an hour ago as a storm went through that area with some gusty winds, not a whole lot of rain. Here's how it looked in Denver this afternoon. Put it in time lapse for you. These clouds are hazy and they're not going to produce a lot of rain, but you might get a quick gust of wind and a sprinkle out of it. But the good news is things are changing. Isolated evening storms, the smoke and haze continue. Cold front is on the way for tomorrow to bring us some relief as far as the temperatures and increase the odds of seeing some rain over the weekend. Details coming up in about 15 minutes. A couple of major decisions out of the U.S. Supreme Court today. First, by a 7-2 to vote, the Supreme Court dismissed a challenge to the Affordable Care Act, upholding health care coverage for millions of Americans for the third time. Texas and a handful of other Republican-led states sued, claiming the individual mandate in Obamacare was unconstitutional. The justices did not directly address that argument, just as Stephen Breyer wrote in the majority opinion. In the, plaint the plaintiffs did not prove injury and lacked legal standing to bring the case forward. Let me say definitively, the Affordable Care Act has won. It's eventually going to be pretty hard to unravel from the system. The dissenting justices reference back to the original argument, saying the individual mandate penalty is a tax and the law could be considered unconstitutional. Now, in a separate unanimous ruling, the Supreme Court sided with a Catholic foster care agency which lost a contract because it refused to work with same-sex couples. Every single Supreme Court justice said that religious freedom is not a second-class right. It's front and center, the, the bedrock of our Constitution and our freedom in America. And legal experts say we're going to have to wait to see how this ruling will impact LGBTQ Americans. It could lead to more legal clashes between religious groups and same-sex rights advocates. Now, Justice Samuel Alito seemed to indicate that in opinion. He wrote, quote, The court has emitted a wisp of a decision that leaves religious liberty in a confused and vulnerable state, he says. Those who count on this court to stand up for the First Amendment have every right to be disappointed. The Colorado baker who won a historic Supreme Court case has been fined for refusing to bake a cake for a transgender person. A Denver district judge says Jack Phillips violated the law when he denied Autumn Scardina a cake to celebrate her transition. He ordered Phillips to pay a $500 fine. The judge explained the violation was his refusal to sell a product. Phillips argued baking the cake would be compelled speech. Phillips' legal team plans to appeal the ruling. Juneteenth is now a federal holiday. The day commemorates the end of slavery in the U.S. and is now our 11th federal holiday. The legislation gained momentum following Black Lives Matter protests sparked by the police killing of George Floyd last year. The bill received overwhelming support in the House on Wednesday, passing by a vote of 415 to 14. All of Colorado's congressional representatives voted for it. I'm especially pleased that we showed the nation that we can come together as Democrats and Republicans to commemorate this day with an overwhelming bipartisan support of the Congress. And time here is everything. President Biden signed it today, so that makes tomorrow a federal holiday for most federal employees. It's still too soon for most private companies, but do expect to hear something from your HR department in time for next year's Juneteenth celebration. And we have to put the history of this moment in context. The United States has not added a new federal holiday since Martin Luther King Jr. Day back in 1983. And even then, it took 17 years for all of the states to fall in line. There are not any states showing resistance to Juneteenth yet, but we understand that it can be challenging for parents to explain certain issues to their children. And our friends at Newsy spoke to a child psychologist who says age-appropriate lessons about race and history can prepare your kids for harder conversations in the future. A two-year-old um, who may understand the concept, you know, they may not understand racism, right? But they may understand the concept of what it means to not be treated fairly or to, to be treated differently. They begin to reason about their treatment uh, rela or related to race. And here's one simple, important piece of advice. Don't go it alone. There are numerous books, videos, and other resources out there which can help your kids learn about difficult topics. At now, I don't know how he died, who killed him. Next at five, a family search for the driver who killed their son. It's very hard. 
Plus, why the next generation of COVID treatments may not be a vaccine, but a pill. Whew, still brutally hot out there, but there's cooler weather and some rain in the forecast.